What is up, everybody? I got a video for you today. I am so excited. I have been waiting to make a video like this since I started my YouTube a year ago. Um, and this is about the Dr. Joe Dispenza Progressive Retreat. Um, I signed up for this thing 60 days ago. Um, I have been waiting for an event to be in my neck of the woods here in Denver, Colorado to minimize costs. Um, and here we are, voila, a three-day progressive retreat that goes from Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and uh, it was $650 after tax. Um, so it was just, it was perfect price range for me and location. It's only 30 minutes from where I live. It's at the Gaylord Convention Center. Um, and I'm just so excited to document this because I have been following Dr. Joe Dispenza's work for about three years. I've, I've read his books extensively. Um, you are the placebo, you know, becoming supernatural. You know, I've annotated these books just to the end of no return. Um, I've read other works, um, studies by other authors that talk about the metaphysical elect, uh, you know, frequency, energy, vibration, the biology belief by Bruce Lipton, who's the godfather of epigenetics. Um, so this has been something that I have just spent so much time and effort on looking past the material world, past the matrix, right? Past, you know, matter and, and our everyday life of stressors and going into the invisible rainbow of electromagnetic frequency, the things that govern our life that we take for granted. And I'm not just talking about, you know, the computer behind me that we all use in our job or the cell phone I'm filming this on that we are all addicted to or the microwaves that we use to heat our food or the radio waves that we use to listen to the radio in our car, but the electromagnetic frequency that's going on in our bodies from cell to cell, from atom to atom, uh, that actually controls the biology of our life. Our thoughts that produce electrical currents that create the emotion that gives off an energy and a vibration that creates our entire reality. And I am excited to be able to disconnect from my environment here, uh, which I feel like so many people are unable to do. We have so much responsibility and stressors from work to, you know, our finances, to our relationships, to what we're gonna eat, to the chores that we gotta do, and go to a separate location for days on end, disconnect, turn off the phone, turn off all of that stuff, and go within and try and focus on you, on the metaphysical, on the thing that is actually controlling your biology and life itself, and that is the electromagnetic frequency. Um, and not only be able to do that, but then do it with other people who are like-minded that are also going to be attending an event and then have someone who's just a master teacher and Dr. Joe Dispenza help us through that so that we can get the most out of that experience. I am so excited and I'm going to be documenting this. I leave in about an hour. Um, tonight is from 7 to 9 p.m., which is a check-in and then like a little meet and greet. And then tomorrow and Sunday, it goes from 8 to 6. Um, and I'm sure we'll be doing some long meditations lots of content, um, and just learning a lot. So I'm excited. I'm going to share this with you guys. Stay tuned. Um, I'm super excited. There is the Gaylord. All right. We made it to the Gaylord. And in typical Colorado fashion, it is snowing after it was 90 degrees yesterday. So we'll take a look inside. wrapped up it was only two hours where we check in and then have a two-hour seminar with dr joe which was pretty awesome seeing him in the flesh in person after uh basically watching all of his work reading all of his work for the last three years to finally see him in person is pretty cool um the two hours was just basically the spiel that he that he has in a couple youtube videos 
where he's on stage going over just the the overview premises of everything that's going on. And although I have seen these YouTube videos that are an hour and a half to two hours long multiple times, I've listened to them audio-wise while working out or driving multiple times, I still found myself writing an entire page of notes on my phone during the thing because it's just like that classic sales mantra that you hear where you have to reach someone seven to 12 times before they finally buy. It's the same thing with anything else. You have to hear something seven to 12 times before you finally cement it. So even though I've heard it five, six, seven, eight times, not until the 11th time do I go, ah, oh, that's it and write it down. So that was pretty crazy. But so the first thing I notice is when we get into the ballroom, and while, you know, people are still trickling in and we're waiting, they're playing like dancing music and everyone's clapping. And then all of a sudden, hundreds of people, there's 3000 people here, hundreds of people just start going towards the stage and just start dancing and grooving. And what I found interesting is I'm not someone who does that. I'm not comfortable like dancing in public by myself per se, but just the contagiousness of everybody in such a good mood and so optimistic and positive and upbeat I found myself standing and clapping and like dancing in weird way that I normally wouldn't. And that was why I wanted to do this event because I've meditated before by myself, but I wanted to see what, what I personally feel when you're meditating with hundreds and thousands of other people at the same time, there is a shift of energy and I wanted to feel that. And I already got a taste of that just with the people dancing at the beginning because it made me want to move in groove. So tomorrow, we're going to go over some content. We're going to do a couple meditations, and I'll go over that. But I just want to do some things, go over a list of profound things. I had to write them down on my computer. Because I just, they just sat with me so strong, I have to, to tell you guys. So the first thing he talked about was convergent versus divergent focus of meditation. So if you've ever done his meditations or any other meditations, what they normally do for the first 10 minutes of the meditation is say, Focus on your, on your stomach and the space around your stomach. Focus on your chest and the space around your chest. Focus on your throat and the space around your throat. Focus on your nose and the space around your nose. And it takes 10 minutes and I would always fast forward in that meditation and get to the, the guided part where it's like focus on your future. What do you want to see? How does it feel? That type of stuff. But he's and he made a joke about it that we all fast forward through it and everyone laughed because that seems what everyone does. But the reason he does that and the importance of it is because convergent, what you need to do is why you focus on the nose and the throat and the, and the chest is because you have to narrow your focus first before you can create. You have to narrow your focus, which helps slow down your breathing and helps get your brain away from high beta to alpha, which is where you need to be to create. If you're in high beta and you're analytical in your thinking, you can't create. So the meditation um, is not going to be as constructive. So there is a purpose, even though it's the same repetitive thing that you do in the meditation, focus on this, focus on that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I know. It's important because that eight to 10 minute warm up helps you converge and narrow and slow and get into the state that you need to where then divergent is the second part where you go more broad and you control and create from the unknown. So that was for someone who fast forwards through this stuff all the time, now I'm not going to fast forward through it. Um, the second thing is you got to sit in the fire of yourself. And when your body has an arousal to move during meditation, it's because I've conditioned it that way. I've conditioned my body to itch or to get up because it's supposed to be, you know, checking my emails or I'm supposed to go see, you know, where my phone is or... Uh, you know, go to the bathroom. It's because I've conditioned my body. And every time I persevere and don't listen to what my body is telling me to do, that's a victory. And so now when I have that urge to, to check my emails, to see where my phone is, to see what my dog's doing, to do some activity that I've trained my body to do over 28 years, and I don't do it, that's going to be a victory for me. That's going to help me prolong my meditations. Um, there is no such thing as a bad meditation. I love that, and he's so true. Um, uh, what I love, how he ended this, um, was so great, and that is with this work, because of how uh, just quantum-based it is, 
we should not wait for science to come and verify the uncommon. We should not sit around and wait, okay, is there a study on this and that and this? And then once it's peer reviewed, then I'll do this or then I know it's possible. That takes 10 years to get us multiple studies, then to get it peer reviewed and then it verified. Why wait around for science to tell you to do something? We need to do the uncommon and then have science come and study it and then change their laws based on what we're already doing. And that's what I want to be about. And that's what I want you guys to be about. And that's what Citizen Scientist is all about, is experimenting on yourself, whether it be diet, exercise, elimination of certain foods, elimination of certain bad habits like video games or watching TV, um, experimenting with stress management or meditation, different intakes of water, you know, avoiding coffee, different self-experiments that take a week, two weeks, or a month to see what the effects are on your body. And we need to stop waiting for science to come verify the uncommon, and we need to do the uncommon and let science come and study us and change their laws. And I'll leave that with you tonight, and I will update you after our uh, 10 hours tomorrow. Day two. Okay, so day two ended, and I'm just going to get right into it. I wrote a couple notes down because we just went over so much stuff, and I'm so excited. So I'm just going to get into as much information as I can remember um, with the emotions of that experience so that you can get some value from it. Um, and then we'll kind of go in a summary at the end. But the first thing that really hit home to me that he brought up a lot is whether you're aware of it or not, consciously or subconsciously, we have beliefs that we accept, believe, and surrender to on a daily basis. Whether that means you're not strong enough, you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not good enough, you're not worthy enough, or the opposite of those things. Maybe you do think you're strong and fast and quick and amazing, whatever. Regardless of whether you're consciously or unconsciously aware of this, we accept, we believe, and we surrender to those beliefs. And the key word that hit me there was surrender. And it is so true because we, whatever it is, whether it's your religion, your financial, um, you know, set with the, how you grew up with your parents, whether you grew up very poor, or very rich, um, your education, your ability to learn, take tests well, your athleticism, uh, the job that you have and the belief that you can't get a better job or you can't learn a completely new job and that you have to go to school for four years to learn anything else, whatever it is. You can't make a video. You're, you're not going to be a YouTuber. You can't start your own business. We accept to believe and we surrender to that thought, whether we consciously are doing that or subconsciously. And that is so powerful because for me, there's so many things that I have surrendered to that I've been like, no, that's just my destiny or that's just my lot in life or that's just the cards that I was dealt or that's just the autoimmune disease that I have or that's just the skin issue that I have or that's just the financial situation that I'll always be in or that's just how I was raised. We cannot get caught up in this false, fake lie that you are surrendering to this belief and that you can't change it. That has got to change right now. Your mind has got to change that idea right now. And you can right now write something on a piece of paper, say something to yourself, look in the mirror and reaffirm something else that you're going to accept, believe and surrender to. And that is so powerful. Oh man, I can't believe I never thought of that. The other thing um, that he talked about is in meditation. We really have to think of our senses, right? Smell and taste and hearing and seeing um, and feeling really as a VR headset, right? Something that goes over your eyes and is a VR headset because we can only perceive the world with our senses. Yet there's so many things that are going on around us that we can't perceive with our senses, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist, right? Just like this phone I'm filming on, how is this going up to a satellite and coming back down and going onto YouTube in a blink of an eye? Those are using satellite waves. 
right? There's a computer next to me. I just heated food up in the microwave. That's microwaves. Uh, if you turn on the radio in your car, you're getting radio waves. There is an infinite number of electromagnetic frequency that is going through us, around us, in between, that is carrying information. And just because we can't see it or smell it or taste it or feel it doesn't mean it's not there. So when you do your meditation and when you try and enter the creation realm, you need to act like your senses, your world, whatever your crazy circumstances are, whether you're getting a divorce or you're bankrupt or you lost your job or your kids are over there, or your dog, whatever it is, you need to take off the VR headset, take off the world of your senses, and you need to truly try and become no one, nowhere, no place, at no time, and just go to infinite darkness and sit with that and disconnect from this VR headset. And that's something that I'm going to take from this. When, when I do my meditation in the morning, I'm going to air guitar taking off this VR headset to remind myself that I am not me anymore. I am going to a new place and I'm going to create a new me. Uh, so just another really powerful visualization. Um, the, the, the thing that I think that going to an event, no matter what it is, but specifically for this work that is so powerful is literally every two minutes, uh, Joe, Dr. Joe Dispenza will say something very profound about the quantum, about how our energy is sucking, you know, our, our ability to create how our thoughts and feelings of our inner world versus our outer world. And then you'll say, all right, stop and look to the person next to you and explain what I just said. And he does that every two to five minutes for 10 hours straight. And why that is so powerful is because teaching is learning twice. So you learned it, you heard it, and then you look to the person, you're like, you just heard it literally two seconds ago. You just heard it two seconds ago. And you look to the person, you're like, um, so, uh, okay. And then you get into the description. You realize how much you really don't know something, even if you just watched it on TV or just read it in a book or just had someone tell you, if they go, okay, now articulate it to that person right next to you. Even though you just heard it, it is still very new and fresh and it's very hard to then say that to someone else. And I love that because by the end of the day, we became very, not only confident in repeating back what he said, but regurgitating it in our own words, which means that we truly know what we're talking about and then felt like somewhat of an expert because we can actually articulate in an explanation that makes the other person understand what you're saying. And you don't do that in your regular life. I read books all the time. I don't read a chapter and then I talk to the wall and say, well, this is how it goes. It's very important because teaching is learning twice. And what fires together, wires together, right? Learning is making new synaptic connections and remembering is maintaining and sustaining. And a part of remembering is saying it out loud saying it in your own words so that you understand. One of my favorite um, Nobel Prize winners, Richard P. Feynman, um, if you watch Big Bang Theory, he's Sheldon Cooper's favorite physicist. Um, he says famously that if you don't know how to put something in simple words, then you don't know it. And that's what I've learned after today is, although I've spent three years consuming this content, I've read everything from sweat cell biologists to astrophysicists, that so many people, the... The difficulty I have in just re-saying something to somebody really proves me that I don't quite know it as well as I want to or hoped I did. And so that's something that I'm going to focus on and work on. And I think even you right now, if you're in your car listening to this or anything in a podcast or whatever, pause it and look to the empty space that is your passenger seat or next to you in your room and just talk to yourself like a crazy person, but pretend that you're explaining to someone and really fundamentally grasp that concept and start cementing those synaptic connections in your brain. Cause I'll, I bet you the first couple times you do, you're gonna be like, uh, what? And you have to reread it or rewatch it or at least re listen to it. Um, and so that was a huge benefit of going to this, um, event is putting in the work is hearing it going. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh my God, that's really good. But then now I need to describe it to a stranger. And they're going to be there and be like, that's kind of right. Or I don't think that's what he meant. So just a very profound idea. Um, and then he'd use so many good analogies that really help you understand. So when you are stressed, which we're basically in stress all the time, thanks to this society that we've built, it is not conducive to the human spirit. That's a fact. 
It's conducive for a few people to get really rich and wealthy and have lots of power and control. That's just the reality of the situation. We are in stress all the time, and the majority of that stress is our finances, our bills, the pain. What are we going to cook? What are we going to eat? What am I, What are my pets going to eat? If you have kids, what are they going to do? How am I going to take care of them? We have so much stress, my boss, my job, everything. And when you're in stress, what you focus on is your outside environment, not your inside environment, your outside environment. And when you're focused on your outside environment, you have no energy internally to create, to control, to enlighten. And I'm going to show you a diagram that he showed us that's going to bring all of that together and make so much sense. But I'm going to start with that. And an analogy he used is, let's say you live in Florida or somewhere along the coastline. And two days from now, they say, hey, be aware we have a hurricane warning. In the next 48 hours, a giant class five hurricane is supposed to smash in to where you are living. Okay, that's awesome that we're able to get that warning in advance. Now, if you live on a in a house on the coast and you get a, tw a 48 hour warning of a hurricane, are you gonna start a new remodeling project in your bathroom? Are you gonna start a new remodeling project in your kitchen? No, because you're gonna focus on the stress, the hurricane. You're gonna get food or you're gonna board up your stuff. You're gonna pack things up. You're gonna be focused on that outside environment of that stress, that hurricane. And that's what's happening to us every single day. We have a hurricane coming, and so we don't have enough time to remodel our bathroom, remodel our kitchen. We're focused on this outside fire that we got to burn, that we got to take out. And so we don't have time to remodel our brain, to remodel our thoughts, to remodel our beliefs that we accept, believe, and surrender to. We have got to make a daily habitual practice that is common. That is normal as brushing your teeth and taking a shower in the morning, as disconnecting from who you think you are. I am not Dylan Brooks anymore. I do not have a girlfriend anymore. I do not have a dog anymore. I do not have a house. I do not have bills. I do not have a job. None of that exists. I have to disconnect, take the VR headset off, and go into the darkness of myself of no place, nowhere, no time, no thing. And then I can create. Then I can re- model my bathroom. Then I can remodel my kitchen. Heck, maybe I've e I can even remodel some hurricane window shutters outside so that if a hurricane comes, I can still do all that because I have confidence that even if the hurricane comes, it's not going to do damage. So that's a really powerful analogy that I hope a lot of people can understand that really helps them understand how important taking time for yourself, whether it's in the morning, afternoon, or night, or all three or two times, is so important and should be commonplace as brushing your teeth or taking a shower. And uh, the great thing um, that he used, which is a real analogy, is the electron. The electron is both particle and wave. And what that means is it's it, the old model of what you might have learned in school is that it's like a orbiting planet around the sun. You have an electron that's in a shell that's orbiting the nucleus. Well, that is no longer the reality. The electron is actually a wave and it's infinite space around the nucleus. And if you were to focus on one spot of that electron cloud, then a electron will appear. It'll become a particle. But if someone says, hey, Dylan, and you turn your head and you come back, it's gone. And then if you focus somewhere else, the particle will appear. The best example I can give you to do that in real life right now is if you have a ceiling fan, turn the ceiling fan on and then have someone else come in the room with you and one of you focus on one of the blades. And in that spinning ceiling fan, one blade will show up. But I bet you the person that you're with will focus on a blade over here. What is, which, which, where's the location of the blade? It's wherever you focus your attention. Because where you place your attention is where you place your energy. And that's what electron is. It's both particle and wave. When you focus on it, it turns into a material particle. When you don't, it's infinite possibility. And that is what this work is. That's why you want to disconnect, take the VR headset off, and come back in. You can't focus on the hurricane. You can't remodel the bathroom and kitchen because you have to focus within. And the electron is a great example of particle and wave. When you place your attention on it, it appears as matter. And when you don't, it becomes endless potential. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to show you this diagram. And uh, we're going to make a lot of sense. Okay, now this is where the aha moment should hit a lot of you, and this is where it hit me. So 
How this all comes together is this is your inner world of thoughts and feelings. And he did such a fabulous job of sharing this. I'm not going to do it justice, but I think this is enough to help someone out because I just could not leave without putting this into my own words so that we could at least have someone get some value from this. And then out here is all your outer world, okay? And where you place your energy is where you place your attention. And we are so conditioned to place our energy on the outside environment, on the outer world. We forget that our inner world even exists or even has any sort of control over any of this. It's pretty mind-blowing how we've completely forgot about that and we focus all of our energy on all this stuff. So what's the number one thing we focus on? Our phone and then our apps like TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and emails and YouTube, right? And all of our energy and time is going out to these things. And then we have our money and then we have our bills and then we have our family and we have our friends and we have our siblings and then we have our kids and we have our exes, right? They take up so much energy. What are they doing? And then you have your pets. What am I going to feed them? Then you have your boss. He's a jerk. Then you have the stress of just anything else. Then you have your food. What am I going to cook? What am I going to eat? Your parents. What do they think of me? Am I making them proud? Then your job. What's going to, what do I got to do tomorrow? Then your car. Is it broken down? My check engine lights on. Then your partner. They're stressed at me. Am I taking care of them? Your coworkers are pushing your same emotional buttons. My past. Did I make the right choice? My future. I'm so anxious. What am I doing? My in-laws. They hate me. They don't think I'm worthy enough for their daughter. My enemy. I put so much attention on my enemy. Oh, I hate them so much. My pain. Where's that back pain? Okay, there it is. Now I remember my back pain. The news. Oh my gosh. The world is falling apart. I'm so stressed. We're going to all die. And so we're giving so much energy to all of these things. And when we're giving all of our energy to all of these things, there is little to almost zero energy for ourselves. There's no energy for ourselves because where we place our attention is where we place our energy. And I'm willing to bet everybody watching this right now is placing their energy on, if not multiple of these, all of these. And as we place our energy and attention on these, we have nothing for ourselves to create. And so what you have to understand is when you operate like this, all of a sudden your possessions are possessing you. You are now being possessed by your possessions. The very things that you think you own, own you. <laughs> Paradigm shift. We cannot allow this. We have to stand up to this idea of letting these outside things that are man-made for the most part consume us. They don't matter. And what we need to understand is as we start to tear apart these connections, these energy-draining things, all of a sudden you have energy to create, energy for yourself, energy to go within. And so what that looks like is all of a sudden you're not going to place your attention on your exes anymore. We don't care about them. They're gone. You broke up with them. Okay? We're not going to put our attention on our boss anymore, okay? You sitting at home and thinking about your boss and how much you hate them, they don't know that you're thinking that. You're not hurting them. They don't. They could care less about you. They have no idea that you are thinking about them. The only person that does is you, and you're consuming 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes thinking about how much you hate them, how much they don't appreciate you, pouring anger and anxiety, and these real emotional charges that are taking energy out of you towards them, and it, all it's affecting you is you. The news, turn off the TV. Yes, there's always bad things. They don't know that you're losing their mind. In fact, that's what they want you to do. The news' entire motto is if it bleeds, it leads. Fear leads always. They want you to be in fear. They want you to consume your energy on it. Get away from that. Now look, now you have all this energy coming back to you because we're not focusing on it, right? Don't worry about your job. You're there from your nine to five. Come home and relax. Your car. Forget about it. Your coworkers. Stop thinking about them. Your past. It's over with. You did it. Focus on the now. Your future. There's endless potential possibilities. And the best way to create your future is to Create it from within, from how you want to do it. Your in-laws, who cares what they think? Most in-laws don't like the other person anyways. They want them to marry a zillionaire who has, you know, blonde, beautiful hair. Forget about that. Your enemy, your enemy tomorrow could die. And guess what? You're probably still going to find another enemy. Stop focusing on that. 
your pain. Don't wake up and reaffirm, oh, where's that back pain? Don't focus on your body. Your phone, oh my gosh, get rid of all this. Don't even touch your phone in the morning. It's just going to give you anxiety. Look at all this energy you now have for yourself to create. Oh my gosh, the weight of the world has now fallen off your shoulders. You no longer have to focus and put your attention because now your attention is on you and your inner worlds. And what is so powerful with this is I'm not saying to forget any of these things. What we need to do is treat these as memories Come to terms with them and move forward because a memory with no emotional charge, that is wisdom. That is true wisdom is knowing the memory of all these things, but not getting upset, not getting anxious, not getting worried, not getting depressed, knowing that they're there and moving on. That's wisdom. You can't have an emotional charge. Bring your attention and energy to here. And that is what's going to happen. And when you start focusing your inner world of thoughts and feelings on yourself, that which you are seeking begins to seeking out you. Think about that. Let me say that again. The things that you want in life, that you're seeking, money, fulfillment, fame, fortune, soulmate. When you start focusing all the attention on you and you take it away from this outer world, you have so much more energy. You have so much more attention. You have so much more strength to focus on. And that which you are seeking begins seeking you and the old you would question when is it going to happen where is it going to happen how is it going to question the new you would never ask that question the new you when you do this work you don't care when it happens how it happens with whom it happens to when tomorrow five years in, it doesn't matter that's the old you you're the new you and that is where it gets so powerful don't let your possessions own you you're being possessed by your possessions. Erase these energy draining connections and bring the energy back to you. And that is just so powerful. And I hope that helps some people out. All right. And we are back with the end of day three. And man, what a uh, exhausting day. And it's exhausting for so many good reasons. I had so many profound epiphanies. Um, the meditations that I'll talk about were hard work. Um, this is why I wanted to come here and do this event in person because you can watch YouTube videos and you can listen to experts talk um, about how you should meditate and, and, and follow a meditation app, but until you have someone teaching you, showing you, having eight other experts on stage showing you how to do it, you can't really get a good idea of how much work it does take to put your body in the right sense, your brain in the right um, mindset, and, and get in a position to really make real changes in your life through energy, frequency, and vibration. Um, and then when you're around other people that are also putting in the work, it makes you go 10 times harder, right? It's just like going to the gym by yourself. You'll get tired quicker as opposed to if you have a partner who says, no, 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 you're going to do one more rep. You're going to do one more press. You're going to do one more. And that's what going to this event was, is when you saw the person next to you who has stage four cancer and they're going that much harder and they're willing to push themselves further and they're willing to sit in the fire themselves and not scratch their nose when they're meditating and not squirm, you do the same as well. And then you push yourself past the limits that you would have ever done at home. And all of a sudden you get a brand new wave of experience and potential possibilities that you never even would have thought because you would have never pushed yourself that hard had you not been outside of your comfort zone. So, wow. So I'll just get into like a synopsis of the day. Um, again, I wrote it down just so I don't lose my thoughts. Um, the day started with uh, two minutes or two hours of knowledge um, that was very science-based, which is why this work is really undeniable. Um, you know, science is what makes the mystical um, pretty logical, and it unifies us because we can assign language, we can assign meaning, we can show data, we can show results um, that's free of any dogma, religious belief, um, anything else to show you that this is what happens when you put this into practice. Um, and then you can articulate that to someone else which then, again, remember, teaching is learning twice, and we did that so many times today that just helped 
solidify those um, those circuits in the brain. So again, just super excited to share this with you guys. So two two hours of learning, um, then uh, um, you know teaching your neighbor. Then we did uh, a really long like 40 minute meditation and for me this was the first time where i sat up normally i lie down and that was kind of the running joke which um if you lie down and meditate don't worry you're not alone basically all three thousand people were there because joe dispenza brought it up he's like i know you guys don't you know meditate sitting up you're all comfortable lying down in bed and everybody laughed which means that everybody's taking the easy way out and lying down yes it's comfortable yes it's nice yes you should do lying meditations a few times, but you should also incorporate seated meditations, standing meditations, and walking meditations, which sounds so strange, but it's so important to understand because when you sit, you are that is that the the aspect of training the body. And that's why I think all of us lie down when we meditate, because you don't have to train the body. You're lying down, you're comfortable, you're basically asleep. But when you're sitting, it's like training a dog. You are training a dog to sit, to stay, to shake, to roll over, to not bark, to obey your commands. And that's what sitting does. You start getting back pain, a little itch on your nose. You want to move your feet and wiggle your toes. You want to stretch your knees because, oh man, they you got to stretch your knees. You know, you got to hear it pop. You got to get your neck, your neck's tight. You got to blow your nose. All these things come up. Your body goes, oh, usually around this time, I got to respond to this email. Or when you are seated, seating, excuse me, and you do meditation, that first 10 to 15 minutes is hard. And if you're not in the mental state like I was in this way, you might give up. I had severe back pain and I had this itch and I had to pop my knee. And I sat there and I said, I am not going to, I am training my body. You're going to sit, you're going to stay, and you're not going to give in to these baby back physical ailments that are nothing. And I'll tell you what, when that meditation ended, I did not have that back pain for the three other meditations for the rest of the day when we still had seven hours left. I did not have to itch. I did not care about my knees popping. I didn't care about my neck. And I was actually wanting to do another 40 minute seated meditation, something that I avoided for three years. And then that's when the idea clicked. Oh my gosh. And he talked about it too. We need to do standing meditations because when you stand up, you're again training your body, but now, you know, most of your time in life is you're standing. And what are you doing? You're walking. That's where the walking portion comes into. Because in order to make the reality of the changes that you want to make in your life, whether it's your ideals, your physical ailments, cancer, psoriasis, you know, um, anything that's going on with your body, or you want to make a million dollars to start a business, whatever that is, you're going to have to learn how to do that with your eyes open, awake, walking, moving. So you need to focus on doing different iterations of meditation. Stop trying to recreate what you did yesterday and do something different and focus on that evolution like a Pokemon from lying down to sitting to standing to walking so that you can literally leave your old self, your old body with all the shitty, broken down, painful parts, the cancer, all that stuff. You got to leave with the bad ideology. If you think you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you got to walk away from that old body that old you and you got to walk towards that new future you that you are building and creating from within because we've disconnected all of our energy from these outside things that are draining us and putting it back into us that is what i learned by sitting in the fire of myself and pushing past the itch the knee pop the neck pain and the back pain oh wow it sucks that I had to wait till I was 28 to, to finally gain the mental fortitude to, to push back a couple back aches. And I hope you can do that too. I hope this video can give you that passion to do that and sit there and go, no, 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 no. I'm going to be the mind. The mind is the body. You're going to sit and you're going to say, just like training a dog, it's frustrating at first. But if you stick with it, the enlightenment, the growth that you're going to gain is going to be so worth it. Okay, we're done talking about that. Again. The people that you meet at this event are truly magical, amazing human beings. The people that I sat next to, I'm not going to say their name just in case they want to remain private, but I was with people who had colon cancer, someone who had a heart and kidney transplant, uh, a brain tumor. I mean, these are people that have really, really incredible circumstances, 
that they could literally just go, fine, I'm gonna throw in the towel, I'm done. This is too much, this is too, this is crazy. That I'm just gonna enjoy what I have left. These are people who have so much real stress and real problems, and they are here putting in the work, putting in the effort, and they're seeing the fruits of their labor. And when you see other people, like the one that he brought up on stage, a 37-year-old physician who had gone through 12 years of medical school and is a, a legitimate physician who had over 100 cancerous cysts around her body that had metastasized onto her spine. And she told her story of how she tried every single cancer treatment you could think of. And she was literally on her deathbed. And then she applied these meditations and the the scans showed her tumor shrinking and then eventually disappearing to the point where she was on stage bubbly and talking. It's hard to ignore that. It is really hard to see that and to hear and witness other people and see their real transformation and say oh, it's coincidence or it's magic. This is real stuff. And it's just like I said in the first part of this video, we have to stop waiting for science to prove the uncommon we need to do the uncommon and have science come study us and then change their laws based on what we're doing. Because if you do it the other way around, you're not going to experience anything. Scientific studies and, and, and scientific law takes tens, dozens of years because they have to be done, then they have to be replicated, then they have to be reproven, then they have to be retried again, then they have to be redone and then reproven until there's so much peer review that it's like, okay, this is pretty much what it is. Are you seriously going to be diagnosed with cancer or have a, uh, an, an ideal or belief that you don't like that you've surrendered to and sit on that for 15 minutes as you wait for all these other people to put in the work and put in the time and testing and peer reviewing before they go, okay, it's fine. It worked. I kind of intuitively knew it worked, but I had to wait 15 years for science to actually write it in the textbooks. No, you need to do it and watch it work for you. Then we broke off for lunch, which again, you meet so many other people that you're not sitting next to. Um, and when you are, what was so powerful about this event is everyone here is for a different reason. And everyone's guard is down and everyone is so ready to change and be transparent and be a new them that they're willing to tell you stuff about them that they would never tell anybody else. So the level of transparency and things that you learn from someone is like, whoa, wow. And they tell you secrets about why they might have thought about that, that they wouldn't have even said. And it puts pieces to your puzzle together. You're like, wow, that's kind of how I was thinking about my ex. Wow, that's kind of how I was thinking about my boss. Wow, that's kind of how I was thinking about my financial outlook and how I was raised. And that's how I thought about my parents. Like The insights you get from, the, from folks that are doing this work and at this event is unmatched because their guard is down and they want to change so bad. They're going to tell you everything that connects so many dots for you um what else what else what else okay so then we we came back and this is when we did the pineal gland meditation which is no joke it's no joke and he showed us eight people who are experts that um are part of his staff on stage and how they did it and let me tell you it's not like this you're not just sitting there Breathing in through your nose and listening to suggestion of a guided meditation. No, the whole point of this specific meditation, which I'm going to continue to do, is you're pulling your breath from your perineum, which is your genital energy center. And as you pull the breath up through your abdomen, through your stomach, through your chest, through your throat, through your neck, to your pineal gland, which is somewhere in between your third eye and the back of your skull, is you're trying to push your cerebral spinal fluid, which is this fluid that goes through your spine and your brain, which circulates every 12 hours, that flushes and cleans your body out and lets your brain float and be safe. And you're using your breath to push and pinch the cerebral cerebral spinal fluid up your spine, up your spine, up your spine to your uh, pineal gland and putting pressure on it to create electromagnetic piezoelectric effect by putting pressure on it because there's calcite crystals in there. I can't go into all of it here. That's why you go to an event where you read his book, Becoming Supernatural, or he goes deep into it. Um, but this is proven scientific literature and it's very powerful and impressive to see. And of course, at the end of this, he showed us about three hours of all of his personal studies that he's doing um, with his scientists, which is great insight that, you know, you wouldn't normally get, um, that he shares for those that come to the event, but 
you are literally squeezing in your whole body, tensing, 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 breathing up, holding, holding, tensing, squeezing, and breathing it out. And that is a breath, okay? And most people wouldn't think of that in their normal meditation practice. They think of a nice, comfortable, no, you're going, breathing, holding, breathing, holding, and not only does it help you get into the present moment so you're not thinking about, oh, what I got to do today, what I got to do tomorrow, what's my finances like, you know, my body hurts. It focuses you in the present moment so hard. And I can only imagine as I do this more, the more clarity I'm going to get. But it gets you into a momentum of where you can then, like I said, walk away from the old you and go into the new you. Just an incredible, incredible meditation. But the important thing that he did before that meditation was he helped us achieve an elevated emotion, which if you watch or read any Joe Dispenza, part of becoming a new you and changing your life and creating the goals and achievements that you want is not only having a clear intention of a goal, but you have to marry that with an elevated emotion like joy, gratitude, inspiration. And so before we did that pineal gland meditation, which was a lot of work, when you talked to people after they were exhausted, their body was sore. My abs were sore. My chest was sore. My back was sore like I had done a workout. It is a full body meditation. Um, we watched a 30-minute compilation video of inspirational videos. So we watched a girl who was at a track meet who fell down in the middle of the track meet, got back up, and then won the track meet. We watched T.D. Yates, who's one of the best motivational speakers, talk about an incredible transformation. We watched a, a dad who just had a newborn baby lose 200 pounds so that he could be healthier for his kid. We watched a America Got Talent golden buzzer beater a cancer survivor who got a buzzer, a golden buzzer. Um, we watched about 10 videos that just anybody could watch and a tear would come dry to see these people go from failure or being at a point in life where you thought that they've achieved, that they're done and they just exceed so much further because they put in the time, the effort, the energy, and they were inspired and it inspires you. And that helped me get into an elevated state. So now when I do my future uh, meditations, I'm going to watch a quick five minute video of an inspirational something to get me inspired, to get that elevated emotion that I can match my clear intention with. Um, and that was something I had never even thought of doing until I went to this event. And I could feel my body change its elevated emotion into, I can do anything. Yes, this is possible. I don't care what others think. This is what I want. I want to achieve this. I can do this. You can do this. Um, and that was just so, so powerful. Um, and, and then the last thing that just you really hit home at the end of this is thoughts create matter. As much as you don't want to believe it, and as much as other people around you think that that's just silly to say, your thoughts create matter around you. Every single thought creates a biochemical reaction that your brain sends out, whether it's electrical or chemical through neuropeptides to your body which controls your health, which controls your attitude, which controls your emotional charge, which controls uh, your beliefs, perceptions, everything. And that controls the matter that is around you that you can't see it yet because you're not matching the wavelength of it yet. Um, and so every thought is so important. And the first thing that I would ask anyone to do after watching this that you can start right now is if you're in the car, if you're at work, if you're at home, and you catch yourself saying a thought, ah, I'll never make money. I, I'm, I'm always destined to be poor. I, I'm ugly. I can't get in shape. Go into the metacognition, which is the definition is you are being aware of what you're thinking about. Kind of come out of your body and look down yourself and say, oh, no, no, no. I just saw that thought that said I can't get in shape. I won't get out of this financial debt cycle. I saw that thought and mentally cross it off with a pencil or imaginary eraser from your outside your body. You witness that thought, erase that thought and type in a new thought. I will break this financial cycle. I will get in shape. I will find my soulmate. I will create my dream job. Watch me. So it's not the idea of, oh, I can never have a negative thought again, and I'm just going to be positive thinking all the time. It's having the metacognition to be aware of 
thinking about what you're thinking about and changing what you've been thinking about. And that right there, if you can do that just a few times a day to start, is going to create change in your life, in your mood, in your emotions, in your beliefs that you have surrendered to. Every time you have a thought that you don't want to have, be aware of it, delete it, and then change it with the opposite. I am excited for today. I am joyful of my life. I am so grateful for everything I have in my life. I am fast. I am strong. I am smart. I am rich. And that is enough to help you start this journey. And what I can say is, um, just in quick summary, Dr. Joe Spencer clearly is uh, an expert. He's put so much time and effort into this. It's second nature to him. Any question that you can ask, he has a, a beautifully eloquent response for. He can tie in every single thought that has to do with anything like this paper, um, whether it's you know your car, your phone, your ex, your in-laws, your boss, your job, your enemy, your pets, your kids, your food, and really tie it back into where you're placing your attention is where you're placing your energy. And the more we come conscious and focused of that, the better off, the happier you're going to have the more love, the more joy you're going to experience, the more gratitude you're going to have in your life. I'm definitely going to look out for the next seven-day retreat. They are expensive. I believe they're like $2,200 just for the ticket. And then, you know, flights to wherever the location is, another $500, and then probably another $2,000 worth in hotel and food. So it is around $5,000 to go to these events. Um, I, too, have done the, the math on it. Um, I talked to the convention center owner. My dad also does trade shows where he works in convention centers. Um, it is not easy to host an event at convention centers. They price gouge you. And so they have to charge high rates. Joe Dispenza, whoever hosts an event at a convention center, because they have to pay back the convention center. Um, and that's just the reality of the situation. So that's why these prices are so high. And then if you want to talk about the $2,000 hotel and resort fees, talk to the hotel and resort. If you want to talk about how high the, the cost of flying is, the $500, talk to the airplane. But when Dr. Joe charged $650 for this three-day event and $2,000 for a seven-day event, don't look at it as something that like, oh, wow, you know, he's trying to price gouge me. It really does balance out um, the cost that they have to pay not only for the convention center time and the staff and the food that they feed you at these events, but also his staff that's working there in person, his staff that's working on his website and answering all the phone calls and sending out all the emails. Um, and, and don't let that be something that dissuades you from thinking that, oh, he's just trying to make a quick buck because Trust me, I am as skeptical as they come, even three years of work and true belief in his work and having changed me when I was super depressed uh, three years ago when I was literally suicidal, I too came into this, even still with three years of following him, annotating four of his books to no end, I still came in skeptical as why is he charging so much? Where's the cost going? How much is he making? Could he do this for free? Could he do this for less? And uh, I'll tell you what, $650, uh, for three days was a fair value, um, even from someone who makes less than 50 grand a year at this current time. Um, so that's a lot of money for me. And I think it's a fair value. I think the the, the lessons I learned, the, the information I gained um, is going to just change my life. And again, the old me would think about the price and the care and, and oh man, I'll, I'll never get out of it. The new me doesn't give a shit. The new me knows that I've now disconnected all this energy from my enemy, my boss, all these things and I'm putting it towards here. And at the end of the day, it's daily work. Don't ever forget that. You have to be willing to do this every single day. And yeah, what a great experience. I hope this gained value from you. If you've been to an event um, and uh, you wanna share your experiences in the comments, please do. If you've never been to an event and you have questions that I didn't get to or things that I could help answer, uh, if you're trying to go to an event or have questions on anything Dr. Joe Dispenza, please put it in the chat. I would love to know in the comments. And uh, you know what? Um, I'm going to leave you with this. Where you place your attention is where you place your energy. And you have to be aware of the thoughts that you're thinking and the beliefs and perceptions that you've accepted, believed, and surrendered to. And think about changing those. I love you all. I, I wish you... Uh, all well. I hope you guys remain citizen scientists in your life to experiment with your life like I did, to experiment with new stress management, with new meditations, with new ways of thinking, and uh, all the love. Have a great, great day.